it's time to play. And what I want to do is kind of show off what, what we did in the public live stream the other day, if you didn't get to attend that. You'll notice that along our back wall, we're starting to expand our uh, break room hub station here with hypertubes to various places. We also have an expansion going on. So I'm gonna hop right out here and show you what's going on over here, because notice along this back wall that we have another bunch of ports being developed. The ports over here weren't enough, and the ports over here are going to allow us to expand to other products. So Robert's been working hard on extending our mall out back. Now, in order to do that, we uh, moved back the space elevator and we're gonna work on phase three this, uh, uh, this particular time. In fact, I think we can go collect our stuff and do that phase uh, right away. So let's, uh, let's go look for modular engines and adaptive control units. All right, we've collected the products, uh, the adaptive control units and modular engines that we need. And I am just going to take and run out to the space elevator and we're gonna plug it in and finish phase three so we can get on to doing the next tiers. So here we go. Control, bingo, and control, we got it. And we're going to load it. Ready Welcome to. to the Project Assembly Pioneer Progress Presentation. Congratulations, the Phase 3 project part shipment is finally ready for delivery. On delivery, Phase 3 will be completed and the main body will be constructed. You should know how this works by now. You'll get access to Tiers 7 and 8 in the Ooh. hub. In fact, <laughs> perhaps you should just go look at the technologies there yourself. It's all laid out so that even a monkey could understand it, so you oh, should have geez. no issues. Speaking of which, I don't you think you need a reminder monkey? about project parts. <laughs> Instead, I will be providing some interesting facts. Did you know the average pioneer succeeds at saving the day? Did you know the average pioneer knows how to optimize pipe throughput? Did you know the average pioneer stays late at work because they care about humanity? Anyway, I thought you might want Become to know more about your better. peers. Good luck in phase four. <laughs> oh man. She insults so badly. All right, let's go send it. And I'm going to come out here and we're gonna go watch it. Because I love watching it be built. All right, a few products are up there. It's shooting it up. Phase 3 of project assembly completed. Fixit's predictions indicate pioneers should generally reach this point faster with above average results, but we should all adjust our expectations according to the situation. It is understandable, the pressure and complexity will only increase from here, so be sure to take on phase 4 with efficiency and competence. Okay, so the main section is being built. That is cool. Can't wait till we see phase four. That'll be way cool. All right, let's go see what tiers and uh, milestones we can set in the hub. All right, so we are able to go to tier seven. We gonna do hover pack first or bauxite refinement? Bauxite refinement. Okay. You need it to do the hover pack, unfortunately, to build the hover pack. Oh, that's right. We need the aluminum, Alka aluminum, to do that. All right. So we're going to select that milestone. And all of these things, we should be able to just go collect, right? I believe so. All righty. Let's put in motors. We're 50 shy. And is that all you needed? I think so. Cool. Let's do it. Boom, got plenty of those and plenty of rubber. And you hear the launch pad? Okay. 
Milestone reached. Bauxite is refined into aluminum products via a multi-step process. Considering your past achievements, you should have the minimum required skill to overcome these new production challenges. If it helps, many others have done this before, so if you fail, someone else will eventually succeed. Man, she's snarky. I hate having her as a boss. Okay, so now we've unlocked Tier 7. We have to get the Alclad Aluminum in order to meet the next Hover Pack milestone. So I'm going to set that as a milestone. And so what we need here is the Alclad Aluminum, which we need 11 of them. That takes two components. That takes us making silica, and it takes us making refining the bauxite into, I think it's aluminum pieces or parts or aluminum scrap or something like that. We've kind of scoped out where those are. We need to run on out there and extract some quartz and extract some bauxite, and we'll go ahead and uh, head on out there. All right, I'm sitting out here kind of next to our highway that we put here that's gone, gone out to the fuel production plant out here, producing plastic and rubber and bringing it back. The real reason I'm out here is I'm going after these two pure quartz nodes and Robert is going after a bauxite node here and he's already been up here. You see his figure up here. This little yellow one right there, we got a minor mark two already extracting bauxite. And so he's just going to, you know, bring it on down with a conveyor and then bring this one on down with a conveyor. Now, the the issue is that it looks like I have to go here along the coastline and I have to enter here in order to get into this cave under here in order to get these two quartz mines. I already tried going through here hoping that it would just allow me to get through to this side and it, instead it takes me straight into this cave system here and I you know, can't get around this. So it's gonna take me a little bit to get through here, but hey, you know, that's, that's the name of the game. I'm gonna keep doing that. When I get to the quartz mines, I'll go ahead and uh, let you know what I've got going there. All right, I found the cave and uh, the cave entrance is there. They weren't very far into the cave, so it's just nice. I've already placed two Mark II miners on here, ready to produce, and now I just need to get the conveyors merged and get product moving out to where we can start uh, refining it and getting it to what it needs to be. We're making progress. All right, I'm sitting on top of a power tower that I constructed in order to get power to the two uh, quartz mines. And I, I'm basically sitting on top of the tower because I can more easily show you that it wasn't really all that easy getting the power all the way here, nor was it easy getting the quartz all the way out of here either. The quartz line literally, okay, I damaged my property, okay. Uh, the quartz line literally winds around all these mountains. Turns out that in order to make aluminum, I also needed coal. Uh, so over here in this little valley, I also drug a power line over here to service two coal mines. We found a pure node and an impure node back here. So I'm just pulling the, the coal from those two nodes. Quartz and the coal conveyors are just winding their way on down to the shore where we're starting to build the factory to uh, put it all together. So as soon as we have a little bit more of that factory built, I'll, uh, I'll be showing you that. Um, so uh, let me build some more and I'll come back to you and show you the rest. Right, right, right now I'm here at our new um, aluminum factory here. I was working hard on getting the quartz to get over here. And you can see the quartz is going into that uh, huge manifold line that we have that's, you know, quite long. And it's all producing, you know, more and more silica. Eventually that'll fill up and stop producing silica. Uh, the silica goes on into these uh, machines that are foundries that are not quite set up yet. 
but uh, they'll be get set up for aluminum ingot and I'll let Robert do that so he knows that he's got them organized that way and right now we brought the coal over here to these foundries and so the foundries are here to create the actual aluminum scrap and then we took the water residual water that came and we put the, the water back into the system so that we can keep all of these running so uh, what's left to do here is to go ahead and connect some conveyors up here and uh, get the aluminum scrap over to those uh, foundries to make the aluminum ingots so I've got these mergers set up here okay there and to there to there to there so that I can connect it straight from oh here. yeah just a little bit too long yeah it was a little bit too long yeah okay so this should be aluminum scrap coming in. Yeah, immediately starts flowing. Now we did something a little tricky with that particular manifold. We sure did. We sure did. We have scrap coming in from this direction and we have the silica coming in from this direction. So the upper splitters are taking it from this direction. The lower splitters are taking it from the other direction. So way cool on that. Hey Robert, where do we think we should uh, put these together so that they can get out to a truck port or uh, some sort of transportation? How about we, we work the outputs towards the refineries? And yeah, we're gonna have to lift them up off the ground to go over this, so like over here, but just bring them down that direction and then send it to the right. All right, so I'll put mergers on this side and we got mergers coming out the other side too, right? Yep, I'll build these ones over here. Okay. Okay, so there's the port we're aiming to. I'm gonna head over to the road and build a, a site road siding. Hopefully I won't get run over in the process. Okay, yes, I could probably just build another one immediately. Good, I'm not even to the wall. That's perfect. Okay. And we have plenty of room for expansion here in the future too. Nice. Actually, yes, we do. I think we could probably double our production here. Okay. Okay, we'll press H to lock it. Yeah. In fact, you are And it looks like it's actually lining up on the world grid. Nice. Yeah, it's working out really well. I went to a straight portion to bring it in here. And the question is where the port is that I had you bring it through. It's there. I think that's plenty close enough. I think we can make this work. Okay, there's our truck station with pizzazz. <laughs> and it's connected. It just needs power. Yes, it does. Once it's powered up, it can start accepting stuff, and man. Yeah, we have, and we have, a, quick. we have a power port over here that I can connect to. There it is. It is now powered up. Cool. Well, right now we got a lot of yellow sticks creating silica. A lot of them backed up. Are the are the uh, are they just not all filled up over here? Yeah. No, it's it's because you only needed a ten and a half, not eleven. Okay. So what we do is we could just take this last one and underclock it to fifty, to sixty-seven percent is the exact amount. Okay. And eventually that will work out. Okay, so now we have a truck station and we'll establish the trucks and take the truck route back and we'll have aluminum ingots coming into the truck station and going back to the mall. So uh, the next thing to do is build a, build a tractor and start moving some product. So let's do that. And 
we're filling them with packaged fuel, correct, Robert? On the other end, yeah. Okay, there's packaged fuel. I'm going to hop aboard. All right, I'm going to start recording. Okay. Okay. Enable autopilot and get off the thing. All right, there it goes. And it immediately jumps the curb. Okay, it's off and running. It's working. All right, are we done here? I think we're done here. Well, let me tell you a sad story. Uh oh. The you know the the big issue when it comes to Tulum is it's an interdependent system. Our refineries making the alumina solution. Those four refineries over there in the far corner. Mm -hmm. They are also making silica. Yes, they're also making silica. They got backed up on silica because we didn't have the final the foundries built yet. Right. And because they were backed up on silica, they stopped making their alumina solution. Uh huh. Be well, because they slowed down, they weren't making enough alumina solution, which meant that our two refineries over here turned the alumina solution into aluminum scrap. Well, that meant that these guys weren't making aluminum scrap to run the foundries to consume the silica. If you have too much silica in the system, the system shuts down. Loop number two. The first set of refineries uses water, creates alumina solution, both liquids. Mm -hmm. The second one turns that alumina solution into aluminum scrap and water. Well, the problem is, is that if the, if the first one isn't running, okay, for example, they're backed up on silica, they also shut down, which means they stop consuming water. If they stop consuming water, then the second set, which is turning the alumina solution into aluminum scrap, backs up on water. So you have this, this horrible, you have these two gears that are so perfectly meshed together that any level of friction in either one shuts everything down. A single, you know, because of super tight tolerances, a single grain of skin, sand shuts everything down. Okay. <sighs> so are you sinking the silicon that's coming from the refineries? Technically the foundries need, or the foundries need all the silicon. From the whole system the system is fully balanced okay. okay so it needs them so where are they coming into the current system then around back right oh there. they're in back of the rock uh-huh wow but and i also, got a smart splitter on there to make sure they stay moving yep and i added the the just sink in, just in case you have that yep so if the foundry goes down at all that will prevent the refineries from also going down right right okay Cool. Uh, the second one is back here between the sets of refineries. I put in two buffers. The two buffers. Uh, I noticed that. Yes. There's one attached to the water, one attached to the alumina solution. Again, with the idea that if one temporarily shuts down and one starts filling, <clears throat> it won't kill anything. Okay. So the and the buffers go in and out. So you, if you fill it up and then it needs it, it'll just drain out of it. Right. So, unfortunately, right now they're both filling, which is a little bit concerning. I want to know what, what the usage is versus what we expected. So, what's the backup that's causing this to happen, right? Well, actually, the water appears to be, well, okay, no. It was staying steady at about 195 there for a while. Now it's filling again. Yeah. So well, it's actually going down below what below 200, back to 195. Okay, good. Like I'm okay with 
occasional fluctuations. Oh, absolutely. You know? Because that's what they're there for. And so it's staying about mid, uh, midway full. So let's check the other one. Okay, the Luma solution is about 75. And it is very slowly filling up to 88, 89, 90. And now it's going back down to 75 again, below 70, 60. I think the buffers are doing exactly what you intended. They're taking the surplus when needed and they're giving back the surplus when needed. Okay. So I think we're getting there. Yeah. I'm a little bit concerned because it, it, it feels like it's supposed to be smoother than this. Yep. But it's looking hopeful. Yeah, I think I think the buffers are doing exactly what they should do. I know we've, we've got enough capacity in the truck station at this point that it's not backing up. We just need to make sure that that doesn't back up the whole system. So you're going to put a sink right there. I see it. And okay, the ingots will go in there. Keep everything flowing well. And I think we're in good shape. Good. Turn off oh. the cameras. Okay. Unless you have another comment. The, the reason why it's shutting down is because our conveyors can't hold enough aluminum scrap. <clears throat> okay. Can't hold enough aluminum scrap. Yep. Our two foundries. Uh huh. They're producing how much? Are making 240 each. Or sorry, right. 360 each. Oh dear. So we got 720 trying to come out in. So. 400. How about for now we delete these two mergers and send them in separately? Did you just. I didn't. Just... I, I saw it, yes. I don't know why it's going off. Okay, now, now it's got water coming out of its wheels. It thinks it's drowning. Yeah, I'm going to rebuild this manifold. Okay. Because otherwise this just isn't going to work. In other words, don't merge these? Right, yeah. If you can unmerge those and bring them in separately. Now everything should flow properly. Now all these will be offline, which should solve... Again, we're solving all of our problems. <laughs> there was a reason why. Now it's to the point where it's consuming enough of the scrap that you can see uh, holes in the lines Good. coming now. Good. That's where we should be. All right. Now we have a truck coming in here with the aluminum ingots. And the aluminum ingots now are, are uh, in the truck line and passing through the truck line. And from there, they are going up and over. And there you see them coming down. And they're headed over to the new section of the mall. And I believe this is it right here. So there it is, aluminum ingots coming in. So the mall has it. I don't I don't know if we have a, a, a depot for it quite yet. We do. Oh, we do even. Okay, so which means we can go look at the inventory probably the last item we're putting in is aluminum ingots and it's already full so now all we have to do is make something with it so we've got the the level of product that we needed to come here and with that level of product now we can make all the aluminum parts that we need uh, which means that we can then unlock the hover pack if you liked what you saw please hit that like button for us and let's get this out to other folks uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. And uh, we're, our members are having a whole lot of fun together. So hope you, hopefully you'll come and join us and see all the member perks that, uh, that we have set up. We have a Discord set up for the community. We're just, just having a ball. So uh, come join us if you can, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.